Hello, everybody. I am the Tramp. You're watching Championship Beer and the Saturday Sit Down. Today, we're going to be talking about pay for play. We're going to be drinking Terrapin Muhu. That is damn good. It's actually the second record of this episode. I went back, I tried to edit the first one, and it was a mess. I was underprepared and rambled. I was wearing Roman Reigns' t-shirt, and with what happened the other day, if you follow wrestling, he got suspended for steroids. I'd just rather redo it. Already redoing it, so I'll redo it without his shirt. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about pay-for-play in the beer industry. The term was popularized in the 1950s when it was called payola, when radio DJs like Alan Freed, who coined the term rock and roll, and Dick Clark, who uh, were accused of taking bribes to play certain music rather than others. Providing compensation to a bar for the right to sell a beer, particularly at the exclusion of others, is against federal alcohol and tobacco tax and trade bureau regulations, as well as many other state laws. Uh, right now we're seeing a scandal, particularly in Boston, where bars are getting accused of taking bribes to put certain beers on tap. But the scandal has moved outward. New Glarus refuses to re-enter the Chicago market, for instance, because so many issues that they claim they had dealing with bars who wanted bribes to stock their beer on tap. Uh, the complaints have caused much higher scrutiny across the country. Here in Pensacola, I've recently heard from a former colleague that the attention to the issue is so high, he isn't even allowed to give out coasters for free. Uh, any promotional item like hats or pint glasses that he wants to give out for his brands, he has to give out personally or it has to be done under his supervision he cannot just leave them for the bar. I've personally seen and heard about deals where a brewery would have kept beers on tap uh, for a long amount of time in exchange for getting a specific one-off release down the line that otherwise might not might end up being allocated elsewhere. Uh, but that was proposed by the bar and not a requisite from the bar in order to have their beer beers from that brewery on tap at all. They'd still run other beers from the brewery, uh, but not as consistently as they were suggesting. At no point was exclusion of competitors part of the discussion either. And being part of the industry in the area, talking to as many people in it as I have, and with all the cattiness that goes on behind people's backs, had something been truly unethical in the area, I can guarantee I would have heard about at least rumblings of it. People in the beer industry talk. You cannot keep a secret in the bar industry. Uh, but clearly some level of quid pro quo is happening. Uh, so even if it's not against the law, what I am asking you is, is it unethical? At what point does quid pro quo in the beer industry become unethical? Is it from the very beginning? Is it when it's a barrier to representation? Is it when it involves exclusion of uh, competitors? Or do you simply believe the market should have no regulations in this regard and that consumers should have the right to vote on the ethics of the situation with their dollar? Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment with your opinion, and we'll come back to this at a later episode. If you have an idea for something to discuss in the future, leave me with a comment for that, too. Well, thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out last week's episode here. And if you're a fan of wrestling, be sure to come back to check out Too Late to Sleep. Tomorrow and every Sunday night, you can check out last week's episode here. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and untapped at, at the Tramp CB. And if you like what you've seen, hit like and subscribe to never miss an episode. And as always, cheers.